Hi, Michael. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Ruby Lane. Hi. We are so excited. It's been such a wonderful dolly ride and such a great week. We're nearing the end, and you've saved something very special for us. Can you tell us what we're about to see? Yes. Uh, right now, we are in the Carmel Doll Shop, the Grovian's office. And when we have events um, at, at here, uh, this sometimes works as a, a private dining room, semi-private dining room, for about 12 people. So we always try to have this decorated with things for people to see. And this is my desk. And if I were sitting here, I'd be facing you. And behind me is our doll, Lucy. Her name is Lucy. And she is a hure. And she, is, she has wonderful things. Oh, and this she, is just breathtaking. Yes, and <laughs> she actually has, in my opinion, one of the most in important curate artifacts of all, of all things. You know, all curates are marked on their body. Hure, medal d'or, or, um, or, you know, the, uh, with the bronze medal from the Exhibition Universal in 1855, they won a medal. This medal, the medals that were won, were presented by the Emperor and Empress of France. This is a very big deal if you were a, a merchant making items, showing your items. This medal, see there's Napoleon III, flip it over, and it says, Calice Chiré. So this is the actual bronze medal that the Chiré sisters won. And we are so incredibly lucky to have this because if you really think about it, they were in business to buy and sell, you know, dolls and make, create dolls and other items that they had in their line. And those they sold off. They probably didn't keep any at home. This was something that's so very important to the individual that has this. You know, this is something that you never forget if you mm -hmm. get an honor like that. And it's very personal. You know, David and I have received some nice honors. They really only mean anything to us. When, you know, when we're gone, that doesn't mean anything to anybody else. So this is really an important doll artifact. Wonderful. So this is under Lucy's care. And the next thing that I want to show you is something not in the case, but I'll get there, is this little baby. So this is actually, a lot of people think that doll trunks, the doll must fit in the trunk. That is not true. Some dolls never never had a trunk that they fit in. This is actually the real deal, genuine Hure trunk. And you can see it's got the label of the Maison Hure. Look at that. And it has the green paper that they were very known for. So this would only house clothes, clothing and accessories. That green paper sends Hure collectors. It does. It makes wild. Them, it makes them crazy. <laughs> it makes them and green you know with we, envy to see that can, green paper. We can spot them across the room. But the first thing I think I should show you is Lucy herself. And come on, Lucy. She's going to come out. I love how her stand matches the fabric beneath. Well, you know, we have the technology to do that. <laughs> So uh, Lucy is a bisque shoulder head hure, first generation. So there's the first the Chinas I think that we looked at the other day. Then the next thing is they become bisque. And so it's, she's fairly, fairly early and she's wearing a party dress. And this is a marked hure dress. It's a known, it's a known piece that, that we've seen before. And that's really important because, you know, we've talked about a lot of things this week. I mean, there's not that much difference between a Barbie as far as what what they were created for and a Hure. She's just so wonderful. And real quick for somebody that's tuning in that maybe has never even heard of Hure, they are a, a multi-generational family of doll yes. makers. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, it's a very old industrial family and it went on, started in um, uh, 18, I think 1850 something. I can't remember exactly, but I know they showed dolls in 1855, so it's very, which the metal proves. Um, and then it went through the through, through the, the two sisters and then a brother, 
and then the company was sold. So it really went mm -hmm. until the 1930s. It did, yeah. But this is the golden age of Hire that you're looking at right now. She's just so fabulous. Do you have a favorite era of Hire? You're looking at it right there. We love her shoes. Those yeah. shoes. Yeah, this is this is it. And you know, everybody has an individual face. I've I've had people because sometimes doll people have no filter, and they'll say, <laughs> "Oh, I don't really like her face because she's not um, sweet enough." Mm -hmm. I love that she's kind of pouty, and you know, this th these clothes are not making me happy. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has their thing. Getting know? real close in on that face, those wonderfully hand-painted features, those vibrant, vibrant blue eyes. She's got pretty big lips, fat cheeks, I love rosy her lips. cheeks. I love her, her chin lips. is rosy as well. And this is something I want to show you too, is the Hira Company really, even, even fashion against fashion desires, are one of the first companies in France that labeled things. So you could almost say they're the, the, the grandmother of designer clothing. This is a simple chemise. This was a utilitarian piece, but yet they marked it. Marked Ure it. et Paris. And wow. you know, the, the, the clean freaks in the world that clean too much stuff, you launder this once, the mark is gone forever and ever. So it's a really wonderful Wonderful. Thing. How often do you find the They're marked They're rare coat? to find. But you know, um, you, you know, we're, we're, Ruby Lane is sponsoring this. Ruby Lane, so you can find things. Here's a, a fur mantle, and it has a, a marked box. And you know, those are the actual box is worth more than the item in the box. Again, it's that wonderful green. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can see in the lid right there. It says Maison Hire. Here's another green box. Kind of like, I guess, Tiffany is famous for their Exactly, and this was just such blue. a new, and this is a really rare piece, Rachel. Look if you know to the twisted metal, the, the Hire company and the, 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 the Leopold Hire, the father of the girls, ladies, was uh, very involved in metal work. So when you see that twisted metal, if you notice this table and chairs, it's twisted metal. So that was one of their signature pieces. So there's many, many, here's a green box that someone decorated at some point. I mean, you know, the, all the, the shades were probably all the same, but exposure, it's a book, but you can see the color looks beautiful. Look at that and color. And here's kind of a very unusual thing. It's a white box with a Hiri mark, hmm. which I have not seen many of those, but they do exist. So it goes on and on with the boxes, but you know, as a collector, you should be able to, across the room, see that green and go, and know. ooh, yes. yes. I have to tootle over there and see what we have. <laughs> um, this piece was, they did a lot of mix and match uh, skirts with tops. This is one of the most incredible. That is so detailed. The detail of this, and I hate to think what, these were expensive items when mm -hmm. they were new. And a mother or a shopping or a grandmother shopping for their daughter um, would have appreciated this uh, workmanship. I should tell you too that when the hearing started, the intention was that they were gonna create a doll and then you were gonna buy it and take it home and make clothing for your doll. Soon they found out that their clientele, which were the upper, upper ranks of society, they didn't want to be bothered with that. They wanted to go and buy all their clothes pre-made. And that opened up a whole industry of doll clothes, doll accessories. And, and it employed a lot of it people. It employed a lot of people. And the, the financial part of that is there's very little money to be made in the actual doll. The um, real profit is in all the stuff to go with the doll. Mm -hmm. Just like right now we have the American Girl doll. That's... Um, uh, the doll is not that expensive. It's when you buy all the things all to the go things. with it. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. I think we should look at some wonderful, oh, well maybe we'll just look at one more great hat in the hat box. And are all of these things that we are seeing Hure? Yes. Hure yes. produced. This is so yes. incredible. There's nothing here that's mommy made. 
Have you ever seen a trousseau more extensive than this one? Mm, probably not. I mean, I think the other girls in the room, other room have a lot of things, but I think Lucy probably has the most. Lucy has this a tremendous is just amount. Look a, at that. A fantastic. Um, I know that sounds immodest, but you know what? No, it's fantastic. Numbers are numbers. Yeah. You know, there's a. Of course. Um, that box. Yeah, and this hat is just to die for. Just wow. second ember, empire splendor. And of course, plaid was incredibly uh, popular at that time. And then we should look at a couple of outfits. One of my favorite outfits is this piece. And this is a Catholic schoolgirl's uniform. And pretty much I shouldn't, you know, in France I shouldn't need to say Catholic school girls uniform because pretty much that was the school. There wasn't a choice of it was a Catholic country. So this was a school girls uniform. Wonderful. And to have it survive, it is wool and it is a, a color that easily fades. So it was really preserved really nicely. It almost has no moth holes. And she looks really cute in it. That's fantastic. How often do you guys change your clothes? You know, we should do it more often than we do. Um, but you know, sometimes it's 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 work to change their clothes. It really is. You know, I should show you that dress we've been eyeing in the camera. It is so. This is a fantastic. Fantastic. Soutache dress. It's just you're a looking at probably a couple of months worth of work to do because each each of these is one row. So you go round and round, and then you gotta come back, and mm. it goes on and on. So this is really a fantastic, and this would be the upper end price row. Price range in its time, and price range now. That has not changed. Mm. So it would be one of the most expensive costumes that you could get for here. Like that, everybody. And I should show you one of my favorites. This is another soutache dress. And what is soutache for? Soutache is basically, if you really got technical about it, it's a braid. Mm -hmm. So it's a braid that imagine, it's a braid that um, two round pieces of braid that are somehow connected. But in the connection, which would be between my fingers, there's what we would call a ditch. So, and then. The round pieces, of course, are rounded. So when you sew it on, you don't sew here or here, you sew between that place that's the ditch. Hmm. And then if you can do that, you can get a very precise decoration. It's very time consuming. If you don't sew in the ditch, if you sew on the round part, you'll have puckering and you'll cry all afternoon. It's a... <laughs> uh, it's it's complicated but and time consuming but not so much if you know you know you know how to do that and this is in this is a, called a figaro jacket and um at this period in time the um the empress of france was spanish so half spanish so there was um a huge revival of all things spanish and there was of course the the um, opera the marriage of figaro which was set in in Spain, so there was, you know, there's always that Wonderful. exotic, but this is just a... Let us see a, the back again, those... Yeah, it's it's really amazing, and, and um, you know, this, we've done articles on Lucy before, and this has been copied left and right by people making kits and things, uh, but, you know, there's nothing like the real thing. Nothing like the real thing. Yeah. And this I should show you, too, because... This is a master work. I know it's not going to be as exciting as the, the soutache and all of that, but I want you to see this is a slip that you would wear with like a party dress mm. like this. So that remember, um, hirays are not uh, ladies, they are preteens, like Rose Percy's a preteen. So part of that is their slips could show 
and yeah. their their uh, pantalettes could show. That would be considered cute. So if your slip's going to show and your pantalettes going to show, well, you want to show fantastic work. Right. And look at the look at, that. look at the pleating and the lace and how it's um, variegated. It's just. I mean, Wonderful. this this was an ex that would take a very long yes. time and to this make. And this this would be as expensive as a whole dress. Mm -hmm. But you know that was very prized for at that time. The workmanship showing beautiful things. Now, what should I show you next? We just want to get in that case yeah. and run around. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you do that, but I'm going to sh show you. Here's a pair of classic Ure shoes that are marked. And these are the boots with the last size. They had a oh, look at that. They had a last. Oh, they, so they were comfortable. They were comfortable, and um, people don't realize that they had elastic. Then it was widely used, and there's a lot of dresses, by the way, that the the mechanism and the underpinnings of it, you cannot achieve it without elastic. Hmm. What's happened as time goes by, the elastic as a rubber, it loses its um, flexibility. And then you think you don't think it's really elastic anymore. So elastic's been around a long time. And the Hure ladies. Let's were, see the bottoms. Uh -huh. They were keen on the latest that. technologies. Wow. She did have rather she she had a chunky body. So Oh yeah, she was. But you know, she was gutting got a percha. Like right now I'm not forcing her into her dress. But when she was young, her body had a give. Because gutta percha was like rubber. Mm -hmm. So you could squeeze them in if the dress was a little too tight or too many slips. But now I don't force them on. I'll, I'll pin them just to keep them together. This is one of my favorite pieces that she has. Her little booties. Oh, look at Are those house slippers? Those are little house slippers. Oh, boy. All beautifully hand embroidered. Oh, those are amazing. I mean, these are just gorgeous so i'll put those down for you to get some good shots you can see the wonderful vivid green because it's you know she does have a lot of things i know uh, while we gaze over all of these green things a lot of people are uh, green with uh, envy wondering will this doll and her trousseau be listed on ruby lane <laughs> <laughs> that would be you know what? When, could you imagine how many carts it would be in? It would be like in a million carts. The site might go down. Yeah, the site might go down. You know, this is her pin holder for pins. And you notice that someone put put together Oh, how Lucy. cute. And pins were very important. There were a lot of garments that had you had to use pins. And so, you know, you've heard, goes back to the 18th, 17th and 18th century, you've heard the term pin money. That was to pin your clothes together. And that was still part of the, the 19th century life. And Lucy has quite a few things that are monogrammed Lucy. And I'll come across, she has a wonderful hanky. I'll come across it at some point. And here is, you know, I want the, you know, be, be aware. There are people that can now make easily make a fake mark mm -hmm. and they can mark things. I don't think you should buy something based on its that it's marked because it could be a fake mark. What you want to have is the piece and the mark match. Mm -hmm. So you can have a Renoir painting and it could be not signed. Did Renoir paint it? Well, yes, if he painted it, all you have to do is look at it and you go, oh, that's a Renoir. You know the brush strokes. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Same thing with your A. So make sure that the quality of the piece and the mark match. So here is a fabulous bowler hat. Oh, I love it. And bowler hats were actually masculine, and then of course eventually, you know, there's an androgynous nature to fashion where going masculine, feminine all the time. Let's put it on her. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yeah, it's very smart. Oh, how cute. Isn't that cute. And she wears that with this suit here. Oh, it's but adorable. But this is a marked hat. And this is the real deal. Oh, look at that. So what I would say to if you Take a if, screenshot everybody. Yeah, if you if you are um wanting to collect these things, the first thing you should do is create a file on your computer or in a scrapbook. You drag things off when some some real thing comes on 
Ruby Lane, drag it into your desktop. Save like things mm -hmm. because these are like Barbie dolls. So this is not the only dress, there's others. And then you can start to compare and then you're tuning your eye like if you were buying a, learning about Renoir. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it's like, oh, it's wonderful that it's marked and I'm happy to have it marked. But the, the, the real mark is all here and all here. That's the mark that you wanna go after. And Look this, at all of these green speaking things. Speaking of mark pieces, this is a fully marked, this is a, for carnival, because you know you have, again, a Catholic country, so you have your carnival um, that, um, you know, celebrate before, what is it, Lent? Lent? No. Um, what is the, where you have to be good for a while? Oh, Fat Tuesday is what yeah, you have before okay. Lent. <laughs> okay, thank you. So this is your Fat Tuesday costume. Oh. So this is a uh, Mademoiselle Pilly Chanel costume. Fun. This, this is for her, but, and it, it's very rare to have it, but this is the real prize. She's got her Oh, little, look at that mask. mask. Mm -hmm. And that's factory as well. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And they, uh, a matter of fact, um, Mimi has one too. She has a carnival costume. Look also. at that, everybody. So that was part of um, uh, a Hiray's, um, you know, repertoire to have. And then, You know, we, we've done a couple of videos where we've talked about embroidering a pillow. And I think when I really actually sit down and do needlepoint, it's not going to be a pillow. It's going to probably be a pair of house slippers. Look at those slippers. Those are little em embroidered or needlepointed house slippers. Oh. Those. And here, look at the color combination. Um, the average person today would be terrified to use purple and red and green mm -hmm. but look at how it almost has a navajo flair yeah, it's i mean just it's just so, so wonderful avant-garde and so so well the, so the green is wonderful for the French. puree mm -hmm. yeah and that's the, the puree green and i'm going to show you something that i don't show everybody and i'm going to give you just a little short little look at it because i've had people asked me to loan them this to them we have quite a few books that we're the only ones that have the books so when you see a lot of the illustrations come around in other literature it's from us they don't always give us credit but here is no this is not it let's see i'll find it Doo -doo -doo. Give me a second. Talk amongst yourself. We are gazing at the wonderful <laughs> doll. We have an well, audience he, here that has been tuning things. in all week. Look at that. So these are Maison Bureau. Maison Bureau was one of the suppliers of clothes to the Hure Company. And those are these illustrations are the ones that you see, you know, circling around the globe. Wow. And this collection of books that was very funny, you know, they didn't, obviously didn't come with Lucy. But you know, I'm, sometimes you have to take opportunities. And one day I had a friend of mine call me from a jewelry store and she said, I want to buy a ring and I'm going to sell you my books. So she told me the price of the ring and then I gave the jeweler the cre my credit card number. Nice. And I got the books. But you know what, I think I've gotten <laughs> a lot more out of the books and she's gotten out of the ring. I don't think this is the one I want to show you. Well, we'll do this another time, but I do have something. Oh, and there are the little Hure dolls. Look at those. Oh, they're so sweet. <laughs> and if, if people that are Hure collectors, have, they've seen these illustrations before, but this is the, you're looking at the original source. This was a, a, a published, a books, books that were published for a very short period of time. Those are incredible. And they um, do talk about the social life of Hure's. But you can see these are invaluable if you're a doll costumer, mm -hmm. of how to costume your doll. Exactly, oh, so authentic. If you are a doll costumer and want to get into it, this is exactly how you can do it. Study, look and, at the textures. I want you to come in 
and look at this is a hero table and chairs. This is where we've been itching to yeah. kind of jump in. <laughs> we see we see a lot of reproduction table and chairs out on the yes. market. Yeah, and the, you know what? They're very nice. I'm glad mm -hmm. that they've done that. It's better than uh, none. It's better than none. And and you know, they're at a different scale, but still, you know, it's not it's not quite the same as the real not thing. Not quite the same, so it's a treat to get up and close and show this to everybody. Oh, she likes chocolate cake. Yeah, and so then do this we. is here to show you. We were talking earlier about Sutash. This is very tiny Sutash. Look at the stitches that are in the back display. Look at that. The back decoration. It's really incredible. Of course, more green. And then here is a known Hure uh, parasol, which is spectacular. And for some reason, Lucy doesn't have a lot of parasols and things. Um, you only you know, need like a that. few. Yeah, she only needs a few, I guess. But she has a lot of other other items. And a lot of these beautiful little work that, um, that Look you'll Look at all see these green boxes. She's got a lot. <laughs> and those are some of the favorite, favorite costumes. And then the last thing I want to show you is one of my favorite pieces that she has is this green suit that is so chic you know you could rework the shape of that leave all the decoration on it and that could be absolutely modern mm -hmm. i mean it, it 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 really just has just an incredible such um, a beautiful color with the mm -hmm. brilliant red and of course then we have the plaids so she has lots of plaids these boxes are fantastic and then more boxes shoes and those of that have been following um what we've done, I know Kay, our volunteer coordinator, was talking about Catherine, Catherine's doll, Lolly. Mm -hmm. And since this happens to be here, this is Catherine. Oh, how sweet. So if you followed that, there oh, she is. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. And so, I, you know, she gave me this lots photograph. Of, lots of personal touches yeah, everywhere there here. Are, there are. And, um, and here's another thing, too. Here's another chemisette marked. Look at that. And... False sleeves mark. And in order to make this, you have to be, to do this, I know a lot of people that have incredible talent mm -hmm. in sewing, but honestly, I don't know a single person that could do this. And it's such a delicate yeah, fabric. Yeah, yeah, and it's just so spectacular. And I mean, this was a, a, a part of a word, many pieces of clothes uh, for a doll. But you know, I'm inviting all the uh, you know the people out there in Ruby Lane to come to one of our events. You could go to our website and and see when we have events. And you know, you might be able to sit in this room with Lucy. That's right. If you guys would like to see Lucy and see these wonderful, magnificent things up front, uh, including all of the other things that you've been seeing in our videos all week, come to an event at the Grovian Museum. You're, it's under events on your website, which is yes. the CarmelDollShop.com. You go to um, calendar. I think it says calendar and events. Under events. Or if you just don't want to do all that and you want a direct line, call and register and, you're, and you will be in and on it. Uh, there's no better place you can be if you're a doll lover. Lover. And this has been one of the greatest treats that we have had this entire week and such a fabulous way to wrap up Doll Week on Ruby Lane. Michael, thank, thank you, you again. Thank you very much, Rachel, and thank you, Ruby Lane. We appreciate bye -bye. it. Bye-bye.